Hey, welcome to Rusty's Traveling Engine Adventures, Columbia, South Carolina. These arrived last month and it's been a busy time, but with contests and shows and all that kind of thing, but uh, got the Satan repaired, ready for the new engine, and uh, I think the first thing we should do is explore the boxes. We've got the two cases beautifully packed by Jacob, and uh, we will first take a look at the ex uh, accessory box with instructions and log. Inside this box we have a set of general TD instructions. We have the Cox traveling engine procedure so that we know what to do when we get it, uh, how to document our adventures with it and everything on to how to pack it up and send it on to the next recipient. So after I get through with everything, I'll read this and see if I did it right. Uh, we've got some extra glow head gaskets and we've got some extra mounting hardware, screws, spinners, and any type of thing that we might need. And the best thing in this box is the log that everyone fills out when they get it. First, Kim Stricker from the uh, uh, Skunk Works in Jackson, Missouri, and a picture of his beautiful bird of time flying over a snowscape, which I'm glad is not my snowscape. And uh, next we've got Eric in Julia, North Carolina, Mr. Get Back, and his log entries. And next is me, so the pages are blank for whatever I do. And I'll fill that out and hopefully we'll do something interesting. Uh, also in this box is probably the first thing I should have looked at is a uh, list of how everything's packed in the boxes and an inventory uh, to make sure that everything's there when we get it and everything is there when we send it back off. And I'd like to remind everybody, please get a tracking number when you mail it to the next recipient. So now we'll close this up and take a look at the good stuff. And this is the Cox Traveling Engine from Cox Engine Forums, TD049, uh, contributed by uh, Jason in Wisconsin, and this is the one that he bought off of eBay that was encased in a block of lucite and had to soak it in acetone for I don't know how long, uh, uh, a week I think, maybe even more, to liberate it from that block of lucite. And when it came out, it looked like a brand new engine. So we've got a nice clean TD049 here, not a scratch on it, beautiful, nicely oiled and cleaned. Uh, from Eric before he sent it to me. A couple of spare heads, a couple of spare carb bodies, a beam mount for anybody that has a radial mount plane that they want to mount it on, and an engine stand for those that want to run it, and the engine stand also has mounting hardware here uh, 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 so that everything you need to put it on the stand, bolt it to your block, and run it will be there. Uh, we've got a general uh, uh, Venturi wrench and I guess it's not a collet wrench. That's, that's your Venturi wrench that you can put on your Venturi and unscrew it, screw it back on. And this engine comes with two uh, uh, needle valves. It comes with a standard TD needle valve and it also comes with a uh, Kerncraft needle valve, no doubt from Texas Timers. Uh, who supplies them these days with the 128 thread per inch uh, thread on it which will allow you to run this engine on a high pressure bladder which is what we intend to do here. And uh, we've got a Cox engine wrench, a pair of Cox engine wrenches, and an assortment of props depending on what uh, sort of speed, what sort of plane you need to fly with. Uh, and that is everything we need to mount it on our little safe. I spent the last couple of weeks working on fixing up. It's had a rough life over the past couple of years and needed some uh, shoring up. We've got new tail booms, new elevator, some new control hardware. I even put the gussets on the edge of the uh, 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 booms this time. Did I put them on backwards? I think that's the way they're supposed to go. But in any case, that's where I ended up repairing them the first time. Uh, and if it does a hard flip over on landing, those will break. So 
now I got some carbon fiber, uh, hopefully a little bit lighter weight and stiffer uh, control rod there. And this one has a radial mount that's interesting. Let's go ahead and take the bladder loose and take the needle valve and venturi off. And I'll show you how easy it is to do an engine swap with this. All you have to do is unscrew the engine. You never even have to unbolt it. Voila! That's how easy it is to change engines. So now, we'll take our new TD, we'll take the back plate off of it, we'll screw it right on here, hook the uh, needle valve back up, and actually I'm going to put the starter spring on it because my fingers are tired from flipping and I, I kind of like to use the starter spring. And uh, we're going to take it out to the field to fly it. So with all that out of the way, let's go fly. All right. And uh, I hope you enjoyed part one of Rusty's Traveling en Engine Adventures. Traveling, uh, what did I name the movie? Uh, Traveling Engine the Movie Part One. We'll see you at the field. Thanks and goodbye. So we've got a nice clean TD-049 here. Whoops, excuse me. So, we, so we've got a nice clean TD. Cut. So we've got a nice cut, which I've spent uh, <clears throat> a couple of weeks. Excuse me, which I've spent a couple of weeks working on. And here I have it. Got the bladder all pumped up with air, just uh, uh, making making sure that it's trained and ready to blow. I uh, will uh, so now we have everything ready for the little Satan which I spent the last couple of weeks working on and got it outfitted with a bladder set up so I'll be using the uh, 128 thread per inch needle valve on that and I'm also going to use my board Venturi either one if, if you want to run a bladder uh, and you don't have a board Venturi, it'll run, it just won't run quite as fast and uh, uh, it, it just won't run quite as fast as if you uh, had a board Venturi. I'm going to keep screwing this up.